Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the fair use, fair dealings guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody, and happy Friday morning to you. I hope everybody is having a great day so far. A big thank you to Archie's Special Lemon Cake for pointing out uh, how much Megan's dress looks like this barber pole. <laughs> <laughs> like the, it's starting up you guys it's not stopping yet okay we have a lot to cover let's just get in there and get her done shall we let's go we're going to start off with king charles an article basically came out that said that later this year and we are in august already so it's coming up charles is going to be going to kenya this will be a first major trip to a commonwealth country since he became king and they're saying that it's going to be an emotional one because after all that's where queen elizabeth was in 1952 when she found out about the death of her father Queen Camilla will also be going with uh, King Charles on this trip, so it's reported. And next month, uh, King Charles is going to France. That was a reschedule. Remember, he was supposed to go in March, but they had all of these um, riots in Paris due to President Macron. Yeah, that's so it's been rescheduled. All right, moving on. All right, this story is a little off, but it was real. I found it interesting. The queen, you know, once she found something that she liked, she was very consistent about it. So apparently, um, you know, she she liked these bags called Lawner. It's a Lawner London purse. I'm hope I'm saying that correctly. She always treated her handbags like an extra arm. We know that it was always in view, and she always had her purse. And people are like, what is it that she likes so much? And the queen apparently said that she didn't feel like she was dressed without a purse. Hmm. So in 1991, she went to the factory to watch a bag being made. Each bag, they said, was taking about eight hours. And they said she was really interested and she spoke to all the staff and, you know, really put her attention in. Now, of course, a special purse was commissioned for her when William and Catherine were married in 2011. Hmm, very interesting. Now, also, the Queen Mother apparently also loved that brand of purse. Now, the guy who runs the company said, you know, the Queen didn't, uh, there was a rumor that the Queen had like 200 purses. Not true, he said. She had maybe 11 total. She reused she had purses that she was wearing that were several decor, you know, decades old. She had one on her arm when she met President Nixon in 1970, and you saw that same purse 20 years later. Very interesting. Now, she would modify them with additional pockets, a built-in coin purse, and longer handles to allow for easy handshaking. And um, she only, in her whole lifetime, they said, ordered a few fully custom styles that you couldn't purchase. So they said as she got older, they made a lightweight version for her. Yeah. Now, as far as what she kept in the bag, we saw that at the uh, Platinum Jubilee, didn't we? <laughs> Moving on. All right, I had to bring this up also, you guys. I'm not kidding. They are talking about Princess Diana's eating disorder in a new children's book. Uh, uh, yes. The idea is to introduce children to her story and her impact. It's going to be published on September 7th in a series called Little People, Big Dreams. And it's supposed to introduce people to the most loved princess. Um, I could think of a better way to do that than letting everybody know that a woman who's been deceased 20 some odd years had bulimia. So there's a picture here of Diana on the floor and it says, whenever she felt alone, she sought relief by eating all the cakes she could find in the royal kitchen. But that sweet feeling of comfort didn't last long. And once it was gone, she would try to get rid of all the food she'd eaten by making herself sick. Yep. And then the book also talks about how she finally got help. It took her time to seek help, to learn to love herself. And then, believe it or not, it goes into her divorce from Prince Charles. Yeah. They're trying to put a positive spin on it, but yeah, sorry, guys. That doesn't do it for me. Moving on. All right. Clickbait. 
look how cute William and Harry were. They were twinning as children before their huge food, you know, feud to, so that you remember that Harry is William's brother because you have to remember that. Now, in the documentary, Diana, Our Mother, Prince Harry said, I genuinely think she got satisfaction out of dressing myself and William up in the most bizarre outfits normally matching. It was weird shorts and shiny little shoes and odd clip-ons, you know, it just makes me think, how could you do that? However, in the spare, he says, Willie always hated it when anyone made the mistake of thinking of us as a package deal. He loathed it when mummy dressed us up in the same outfits. I barely took notice. I didn't care about clothes, mine, or anyone else's, but for Willie, it was agony to wear the same blazer and the same tight shorts as me. Uh-huh. All right, this is a little bit different. Now, I don't know who this gentleman is. He's obviously a Republican congressman. And um, I think he's getting sick of Harry. We're all getting sick of Harry. He has now introduced what's called the SPARE Act. I'm not kidding. Hashtag SPARE. And this requires fair enforcement of the nation's visa laws, okay? So what he said is left-wing celebrities like Prince Harry, who have a self-recorded admitted history of illegal drug use, should be subjected to the same standards and enforcement of our country's immigration laws as any other alien. And individuals should be deported immediately if they're caught lying on their visa application. And if the executive branch is granting waivers on the basis of drug usage, that information should not be hidden from the public. Exactly. Now, I don't know this guy. Uh, obviously, he's in another state, but he there's some stuff on his Twitter account, which I find interesting. Um, he wants to do something called a passport notification. And basically, if you're an American and your passport's going to expire within six months, they have to notify you. I think that's actually a really good idea. He's got some nice ideas. All right, moving on. On a blind item has come out that basically says that it's either Beatrice or Eugenie, that one of them apparently, according to this, allegedly had an affair with one of um, Megan's friend's husband. And uh, it's all coming up again. Gee, I wonder. Hmm. All right, moving on. All right. Now, I found this on Twitter. I, I wish I could remember who put it up, but basically what it comes down to is Liza Minnelli was one of the first A-listers to say, uh-uh, uh-uh, you're not going to put my name out there because a report in a tabloid said that Harry's friendship with Liza Minnelli helped him get his feet in L.A. And Liza came out and said very, you know, well, I wish him well, but I've never met them. And any statement to the contrary is a complete fabrication. So, yeah, people have been denying knowing them since the beginning. All right, moving on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, another puff piece. Prince Harry let it slip how he'll spend the summer with Archie, Lily, and Megan. Wait, are you ready for this? Here we go. Here we go. He's going to spend his time at the beach. Wow. If that's not a clickbait article, I don't know what is. Do you really care that he's going to be at the beach seeing as how he lives close to the beach? All right, moving on. All right, this was just an update. Do you guys remember I was on Popcorn Planet with Andy during the week he was out? And I pointed out that Harry was wearing a black shirt here when he was being interviewed. Then I pointed out that during this scene that supposedly took place at Easter, Harry was wearing a black shirt again. Then you have the pictures where Harry is sitting next to Megan and Megan is going, oh, look, a text from Beyonce. You're the one to stop generational pain, blah, blah, blah. And I still doubt that Beyonce sent that, by the way. How about this picture after Philip died when he's sitting there once again in a black shirt? This, this was my point, you guys. All he ever does is wear black shirts. It's like she's got a gazillion dollar wardrobe and he just owns black shirts. So the reason that this came up again is because we know that Harry is on the other side of the world with Nacho. And of course, the two of them put up a picture. Here we go. Yeah. What's Harry wearing? <laughs> oh, you just can't. Doesn't he own anything else? Now, thank you to Goo on Twitter for pointing this out. He says, why the hell? I'm already going to hell. So... You know, and you'll be there with me because the memes have started. We know that Harry and uh, his friend Nacho have some sort of a weird, funky bromance going on. And so this was the uh, meme they put up. <laughs> you 
guys. I mean, seriously, it's one thing to have a male friend. It's another thing. This is something else. The way they hold hands, it's like, for me, that's just unnatural, especially in this picture. Oh, my goodness. All right, you guys. That is the end of our first video. This is video one. Come and join me for video two because there's a lot more to cover. You won't believe it. Let's go.